and we're back. Uh, this one's a long one because, again, we have a lot to cover. But as I left off, um, you can see there's just so many layers of, like, mul a multitude of generation uh, trauma. And um, you can see that Kree's, regardless of how people see him in the mo from the movie, he did have... Um, it wasn't just because Johnny was his his prize champion uh, and favorite but there was like this he took on a very fatherly role for for Johnny who was brought up you know in this very kind of chaotic upbringing because even though he had his mother who didn't abandon him his father did and he had to live in this household with his stepfather that didn't necessarily care for him and he adopted or tried to adopt all the characteristics that he remembers as a kid. Few, very few memories he has of his of his father, his biological father. And that's why also we see like these instances of like him being addicted to addicted to Coors beer because that's all he found of his father. Which we see in season four that his mother finds like all his little like tokens of his father that he had like kept as this little boy wanting to see his father again and and her saying he left us and he should just you know not be uh, anything to you and she just takes all these mementos that he treasured and she dumped it so these are all elements that would build his character of who he is um, and again very relatable. How many, how many people do we know like this in our lives? Um, and, and then Kreese, who are also comes from like a checkered past, uh, issues with his own family, fled to the army, recruited himself, went to Vietnam, um, you know, always trying. He was essentially the good guy, but through ex experiences in Vietnam, he just became jaded. And... Um, even though he had this warped sense of no mercy, um, there's an instance where, yeah, he felt mercy or wanted for Terry Silver's character to have mercy when it came to him trying to be him to a bloody pulp. And then he goes home, to, uh, Johnny's character goes home drunk and thinking about his own issues with his own son and uh, feeling guilty and Miguel who has stepped in he's coming back from the prom and the whole and you got to see the prom the prom scene this prom scene is everything but he helps him on to because um, he had like collapsed in his living room and Miguel picks him up and tries to kind of put him in bed very reminiscent to also the Karate Kid or Karate Kid 2 where um, Mr. Miyagi also is inebriated so again these all these little Easter eggs are reminiscent of the movie or the movies if you haven't seen them it makes you want to replay them so you can see and spot these small instances but unfortunately Johnny is so inebriated that he thinks he's talking to Robbie and that hurts Miguel who also has his own trauma because he's been raised even though he's been raised by a loving mother and grandmother he doesn't have any any kind of um, relationship with his father which then we find out much later, spoiler alert, that uh, his, his father, he found his father, he was able to find his father online, but um, his father doesn't have any recollection of him, doesn't even know that he exists because the mother fled the relationship because he was doing God only knows what. So we'll see and we'll find out for season five, <laughs> which again gives us more more to anticipate and this is what how they're smart because they always leave these little easter eggs so leaving you wanting more um so those are gray instances and then leading up towards the tournament we see <clears throat> that um terry's character is kind of coming back in the sense that However, he wanted to play dirty in Karate Kid 3. We're seeing him wanting to play dirty for the tournament, too. And it being this... He wants to run the do dojo very, like, this totalitarian 
kind of way of thinking. It's his way of the highway, no mercy. There is no pain in this dojo, right? It's just like you're just not allowed to be a human being. Although if, essentially at first it seemed like he was trying to like apply whatever he learned in therapy uh, to kind of forget the trauma that was crease. <laughs> It, that sinister side is, is starting to kind of bubble up, and um, and almost and and then again, there's this like another Easter egg that is kind of left on a cliffhanger because Stingray, uh, who again we remember him from previous seasons, is a much older student. He is not a teenager. Most of the students are teenagers, or, or even preteens. <laughs> Um, he wants to be such a, a Cobra Kai so badly. Kreis humiliated him and threw him out of the dojo. And there's a heartbreaking moment there. So when he comes back crawling and saying, Hey, look, I'm good with the guys. They want me on the team. Terry has had a number of drinks because Kreis stopped him from beating Johnny to a pulp. And so he beats Sting Stingray, unfortunately, to a pulp. Sends him to the hospital. But... Somehow he reaches out to him <laughs> and at the biggest climactic scene towards the end that he somehow is able to manipulate Stingray into thinking, if you want to be Cobra Kai and we win the championship, I want to get rid of Kreese. Remember how he humiliated you? So you're going to have to point the finger that this beat down that I gave you, you're going to say, Kreese gave it to you and then we're going to have him arrested. <laughs> And somehow, Terry has shed his snake skin with Crease and his allegiance to him. Because, yeah, they, they um, even though the kids genuinely did win the tournament, um, Terry was still playing dirty and had um, bribed the referee. Because we see that towards the end. And who discovers it is, Tor is Tori. And um, it starts to make her, I, I know in that instance, just the way that, the camera pans to her you can kind of tell that she's starting to feel like did I win this on merit was it because you know you paid off this man and it, it makes her kind of self-doubt which I, I get a feeling and also even with Robbie which is jo um, Johnny's son and he's an excellent athlete he's able to just like whoops any anybody's ass including our new character Kenny and again, this is a new character. It's not like, oh, this is the African-American character. Check. They're not checking off any boxes here. It's a genuinely a new character, very reminiscent of Danny from Karate Kid no, Part 1. He's the new kid on the block. And the irony here is that he's the new kid. Um, and um, you can see he's dorky, he's geeky. He just knows how to run really well. And uh, as he's being picked up by the school bus, he's picked on just because he's a little on the goofy side and very much a nerd and loves his video games and whatnot. And the little grouping, the little clique that decides that it would be cute to um, make him feel foolish and make him feel stupid is the, the, the leading champion here is um, Danny's son. So Anthony, Anthony Russo. Which is so funny because, you know, perhaps he went through his own bouts of bully because when we first see him, but we never really hear anything about any trauma of him in school. You could just tell that he was a pudgy kid. And then now that he's hit a growth spurt, he looks and even sounds different. His, like, voice dropped. It was like, oh, Lord. But he's still very much a child. And so, but he... And again, now he's having conflict with this new kid, and it's always over a girl, very reminiscent of Karate Kid Part 1 with Allie and Danny and Johnny. And him trying to, like, win her and trying to be cool with his friends, he just wants to, like, always rag on this kid, almost to the point where it's just, like, it's cyberbullying, it's actual bullying. They get a bunch of milk stored in his locker. I mean, they, they totally make this kid's life a living hell. He, you know, his father's in the army. His older brother is in juvie uh, or even in jail. His mom is not home because she's always working. So it's hard for him to even survive. So he finds Cobra Kai because of his father and knows that Robbie is a part of the Cobra Kai and sends him there. And Robbie's able to train him little by little. 
And he also takes on, adopts this like fatherly figure uh, for him because he realizes that there isn't a male. Plus, I think also because Robbie grew up with no real male presence, he wants to do this and redeem perhaps his own trauma through Kenny. And though Kenny adopts certain things because Robbie at least was trained by Danny, so there's a bit of Miyagi do. Um, Right, my Miyagi-isms <laughs> in his teaching, along with Cobra Kai. Um, but um, but unfortunately, it gets to the point where he gets drunk off power, and the fact that he can now defend himself, that uh, he he becomes jaded, and so Robbie sees the error of his ways, and especially during the tournament, because Kreese got in his head and was like, are you fighting your friend or an opponent? And so Robbie, kind of like knowing that he's much more stronger and bigger, totally knocks poor Kenny off his behind. I think he even breaks his nose. It's pretty bad. And um, <laughs> here is where the uh, <laughs> Miyagi-isms uh, come into play, because this was uh, known in the movie, and they, they bring it up for the season four because uh, Danny now says it to Robbie as well because Robbie's very like I want to win this is the purpose that's why we're here to win and there's a very important lesson here where he says quote never put passion in front of principle even if you win you lose and that's true because though they won the tournament Kreese got what he wanted At the end of the day they really didn't win you know everybody everybody suffered a loss so um Robbie sees the error of his ways, and there's a touching moment finally between father and son, Johnny and Robbie, and it seems like it's going to progress. There's a possibility there, too, that perhaps he might come back either to Miyagi-Do or to Eagle Fan, Fang, which is this horrible name that poor Johnny came up with because he couldn't, he wasn't Cobra Kai anymore. Although the teachings are very reminiscent of Cobra Kai, that's what Dan, th that's what happens in the first few episodes because they're just kind of battling like you know, you're all attack and you you know Miyagi, uh, do it's more on defense and it's just and then so it's just like two conflicting ways of teaching, but there's a lot to be learned with both teachings and this is where we see and this this is why I love this show because there's so much gray in this show that what you think sounds right or is the right thing to do you will be they will hit you with devil's advocate and then you'll be like hmm is it is it a hundred percent right and then we're also hit with the fact that you know Danny's very self-righteous and rightfully so, because it came with all the, that world history of Miyagi and uh, all that was incorporated into him that he infused into Ralph's character, Danny. But is it always right? Is it always fitting? And that's what um, where Johnny's input comes in, because he's like, you always think you're right. Like, you really think that it's just genuinely your way or the highway. And then, okay, I just want to stress this that the most anticipated scene is when we get the rematch <laughs> we finally got the rematch for this season because they've always said that ralph won the tournament because of that illegal kick and they always said if there was a rematch if there was another opportunity for them to really go at it who would really win so i believe it's episode five or six and they're all decked out in the original keys. <laughs> Johnny's in black, Ralph's, uh, and um, <clears throat> Danny's in white, and they go at it. And it is the most anticipated episode. Honestly, they really gave the fans what has what we've been wanting, we've been drooling for the rematch of these two characters. And then at the end, for it to have ended the way. It's <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it for you. You got to watch it for yourselves. But again, this show does not disappoint. Even the cliffhanger, how it leaves off with the possibility of Robbie and um, and uh, who else is coming back, I think. Oh, and Tori might flip on, on Cobra Kai because now who's running the show is Terry, Terry Silver. And now that Kreese is in, the, in jail because of Stingray. 
they totally like pinned it on him so we don't know how this is going to pan out for future and now that cobra kai is one he wants to expand he wants to have branches and just keep it moving so we'll see how they'll come back to this but honestly the show and and miguel miguel ended up not finishing the tournament left because he injured his back and then started questioning his relationship with his sensei with johnny and then he opts to go find his father from mexico mexico city so we'll pick up season five in mexico which i believe they shot in puerto rico but nonetheless 